If you're in the middle of the ocean and something happens, it's quite dangerous. Ich wach nachts auf und überlege, Mensch, hast du das jetzt alles richtig gemacht? Amra more zai, babbe se zai, eta amader ichcha, unader kichui na. They're some of the toughest workplaces on earth. Ships. In this show we'll be meeting three young men struggling to keep their heads above water. I'm in Chittagong, Bangladesh, where ocean vessels come to die. Shipbreaking is big business. Workers here dismantle every last piece so the materials can be reused. I'm meeting one worker, Alamgir. We're not allowed to enter the shipbreaking yards together. So instead, we take a little fishing boat out to get a closer look. Alamgir doesn't know his exact birthday, but he thinks he's about 20 years old. His job is to cut huge iron plates from the ships using a blowtorch. He works five days a week, making at most 450 taka a day. That's less than five euros. Accidents on the job are common. Alamgir tells me explosions can kill several men on the spot. Working with heavy metal parts can also cause serious injuries. Kevin, there's no social security for the workers. Shipyard owners hardly provide them any safety gear or training. Does that make you angry that uh, the people who make the most money do not care more about you and your safety? But for the international companies who dump their old ships here, the priority is money, not people. Before they end up in the cemetery, this is where many cargo ships go when they're still working. I'm in Rotterdam, on my way to the biggest and busiest harbor in Europe. Every day, hundreds of vessels sail in, carrying cargo from all over the world. I've come here to meet a young man who works on board a cargo vessel. This is Jeroen. Right now, he's in the middle of his shift, cleaning out old fuel from the ship's fuel tanks. Jeroen is 20 years old and a seafarer from the Netherlands. He's an apprentice on board the vessel, and he's studying for a career as a ship's officer. But right now, he's still learning and has to do everything, including the dirty stuff. The ship just arrived here in Rotterdam after a week's journey on the ocean. Walking on board, it feels like I'm entering a different world. Ships like these are much longer than a soccer field and can carry thousands of tons of cargo. I get to talk to Jeroen during a break. I'm curious if he knows the situation in Bangladesh and what happens when ships like these die. So I do know 
uh, what's going on in, in those countries. And it's really uh, yeah, kind of ridiculous, you know, that with the, with the technology of, of today and the safety equipment and everything, it still has to go in such a way because it's, it's just cheaper, you know. The people walking barefoot and, and, and everything, it's, yeah, it's just sad, you know. Before they go places like Bangladesh, these big vessels can live up to 30 years. They handle a huge amount of the world's trade. Around 90% of the world's stuff is transported by ship. After work, we go inside the boat to the sleeping quarters. Yarun shows me his room, where he's living for his five-month shift on board. It looks comfortable. He has an ocean view and a private bathroom. But I do notice that something's missing. There's no posters or pictures on the walls to remind him of his friends and family. Leaving them behind doesn't seem easy. You told me that you didn't sleep very well last night. Was it at all because you were thinking about your girlfriend or was it just something different? Yeah, sometimes you worry a bit about things like, like how do I do this or how do I do that and how's it going with my girlfriend and my family and, and uh, you know, what are my friends doing at this, at this right moment? Uh, you know, are they having a party or, or maybe hanging out? And a lot of things which I miss, you know, because I just can't be there because I'm on the ship. And yeah, sometimes you can worry about it, but yeah, I try not to think about it too much. Hello. Hello. Yarun yeah. sends text messages to his girlfriend every day, but he hasn't seen her since the day he came on board three months ago. <laughs> when there's no work in the big ship breaking yards, Alamgir does day labor in smaller scrap yards. There are lots of them, all across the city of Chittagong here in Bangladesh. These scrapyards specialize in recycling specific parts of the ships, like pipes. Work here is a little bit safer than in the big yards, but it pays less and even this work is far from healthy. I saw when you were cutting the pipes that there was fumes coming out and also that there was paint on them. Um, do you worry about your health sometimes because of all those substances? Hey, I'm sure. I guess that the one who forgot wrong, I say, Kotogula wrong here, money or the Duma Gula. I guess I should you go in the party. Our Kotogula Duma said the Gula money, Kubiakta money mark talk. They have guessed the Amar Aske, Ami, cutting good to see Duma Gula, Manaka Duxe, Bamuka Duxe, for the Namikas. I define for Alam Gear a day at home means a day without pay. It could even get him fired. The same thing goes for the big yards too. For now, I'll have to leave Alam here. He needs to go to his main job and he says he's too afraid to take me with him. Getting him in trouble is the last thing I want. But after what he's told me about the shipbreaking yards, I'm determined to see one for myself. Compared to the container ships in Bangladesh and Rotterdam, this boat is tiny. It's 5 a.m. and Paul has already been up for almost three hours. He works as a fisherman off the German coast. I try my best to assist him for a day. Wie krieg ich den jetzt raus? Rückwärts oder vorwärts? Kopf frei. Und dann nach und nach die Maschen immer runterziehen, ne? Okay, und drinnen im, im Maul dann so einhaken, oder? Ja, mit dem Finger so ein bisschen rein. Dass ihn festgehalten kriegst. It's my first time on a fishing boat and I'm already feeling sick after just one hour. 
but Paul and his employee don't mind the waves or the blood. They can spend up to 16 hours a day here, killing up to 800 fish right on the spot. Nee. Nee, man kann das ungefähr abschätzen, wie lange wir brauchen, aber das kann sich auch manchmal ganz locker da um zwei, drei, vier Stunden noch mal verschieben. Ne? Das, das ist dann eben so, wenn, wenn man das möchte, dann muss man das auch durchziehen. Wenn man Fischer ist, dann ist man richtig Fischer. Von Anfang bis Ende. Paul lives by the Baltic Sea in a small town called Kühlungsborn. He's one of very few young fishermen in Germany. Even here in this traditional fishing area, hardly anyone wants to do a tough job like this anymore. Paul puts out the nets. This is when he needs to concentrate the most. Das ist sehr gefährlich hier hinten. Wenn du im Netz hängen bleibst, gehst du hinten rüber. Und dann bist du weg. Wenn er alleine auf dem Kutter ist, hat er Pech gehabt. Und wenn ein zweiter mit bei ist, kann er den Kutter noch stoppen, wenn er es mitbringt. This part is crucial. The spot where Paul decides to cast his nets today will determine how many fish and how much income he has tomorrow. Getting into a shipbreaking yard is no easy task. As a journalist, I'm not welcome here. The shipbreaking companies are afraid of bad press about the working conditions. With the help of a guard, I managed to sneak in. There are no official figures, but it's estimated that 20,000 men work in Chittagong's shipbreaking yards. Inside I can see what Alamgir described to me, hard physical labor. Many of the workers aren't wearing gloves or goggles to protect their eyes from flying sparks. Others are walking barefoot on scrap metal. Some also look very young. Children make cheap workers. After just a few minutes, they kick me out. In Europe's biggest harbor back in Rotterdam, Jeroen and the crew are preparing for a ship inspection. They need to make sure everything works perfectly. Today the engine is getting a tune-up. Jeroen helps lift it out of the room below. The engine is heavy and fragile. There are only 12 men working on the ship, so there's plenty of work to go around. Sometimes even the seafarers need a tune-up. After a long day of work, this is where they come to work out their frustrations. It's the craziest gym I've ever seen. Everything is made from old boat parts, including the bench press. He lets me give it a try. Uh, you see, it's not that heavy. <laughs> if you have a bad day, just work out and forget everything. Yeah, it's, uh... Jeroen's co-worker Oliver is from the Philippines. One out of every five seafarers in the world is from there. When Jeroen gets a full-time job, he'll work for about three months with no break. But most Filipinos work for a year or more non-stop to send money to their families. I have the biggest respect for these guys that they can manage it to do it. And, and every day, they, even if it's raining, uh, minus 20 degrees, uh, thick layer of ice on the ship, and, you know, and still they're working. And, and that for eight months straight, yeah. It's really crazy. I think for us in, in Europe, it's, it's almost unthinkable to do this kind of work for that small amount of money which they get.
once a month, fishing regulators stopped by to check up on how much Paul is catching. The EU wants to protect species from overfishing, so they've put limits on how much fishers can take from the water. Environmentalists say the catch allowance is still too high, but fishers say any more restrictions and they won't be able to make a living. Natürlich fühlt man auch so ein bisschen mit den Fischer mit, weil man weiß eben, was so ein Fischer zu leisten hat und, und äh, was er am fangen muss, damit er am Monatsende dann sagen kann, ich kann mir auch mal was leisten oder essen gehen oder weiß ich. Ne? Also kommt auch immer drauf an, wo man seinen Fisch vermarkten kann. Also die Fischpreise sind ja auch wieder die andere Geschichte. Fish prices have gone down and that's put a lot of people here out of business. Paul is just 20 years old, but he already owns his own boat, which also means he has a mountain of debt. The boat cost half a million euros. Paul will have to catch a lot of fish before he's able to pay it all off. Hast du abends Rückenschmerzen? Ja, aber darüber wird nicht gesprochen. alles körperlich anstrengend. Das, bei ruhiger See geht das alles noch, aber wenn wir denn äh, schwere See haben und ein bisschen Wind dazu und Seegang, dann wird das alles erschwert dadurch. Ne? Even at minus 15 degrees Celsius, Paul keeps on working. Ah. And it's not enough just to catch the fish, he also has to coordinate with his buyer. And that's not easy when your buyer is your own father. Tja, fünf rum, denke ich mal. Drei, vier, halb, fünf, drei, vier, fünf, fünf. Ja, was soll ich denn machen? Ja, ein bisschen Beeilung. Schönen Dank auch. So, hau rein. Tschüss. So, geht los, Ralf. Ich werde von der Pauls had a busy 12 hours at sea. He didn't even stop to eat. But it's been a successful day. He's heading back to the harbor with 700 kilograms of fish. His dad comes to pick up the catch, but he's leaving his son to stay on the boat overnight. Paul has to get an early start again tomorrow morning. Tonight, Paul will only get about three hours of sleep. When he's not taking ships apart, Alamgi helps out around the house. He lives in a small village near the coast, sharing this little hut with his mother and another family. Alamgir's mother Rahima takes care of most of the housework and the cooking. Alamgir's father died about 12 years ago. Suddenly, taking care of his mother and younger sister became Alamgir's responsibility. He was just nine years old when he quit school and started working in shipbreaking. Even though Alamgir missed out on his childhood, he feels proud that he can provide for his family. Alamgir's mother is a source of strength for him when things get tough, but she's also his main concern.
ইয়ার্ডে মানে হেল্পার আছে দুইটা ওই হেল্পারগুলোকে মানে কাজে ভাড়াই দিছে ওরা এখন বর্তমানে কাজ করতেছে back on the german coast this town used to be home to hundreds of fishermen today there are only a dozen left just like in bangladesh family ties here are an important safety net paul sells the fish to his dad who owns a fish smokery this is the only way he can be sure to get a stable price his dad pays him around 2 euros for each caught fish he brings in Otherwise, Paul would have to compete against cheap frozen imports. Paul's dad is proud to sell his son's fish. But he also knows that Paul doesn't get to enjoy the kind of carefree life that many people his age have in Germany. Das macht kein normaler Mensch, sag ich mal so. Diese Zeit als Jugendlicher irgendwo. Da haben die ganz andere Interessen teilweise. Ne? Da muss erstmal machen, ne? dass man den Tag so durchsteht. Und das ist ja nicht nur ein Tag, das ist ja, geht ja immer weiter. Ne? Das muss alles zusammenpassen. Ne? Dass auch die Familie da mitmacht. Ne? Sonst, wenn du alleine stehst, hast du keine Chance. Ne? Du musst wirklich ein Verbund muss das sein, sonst passt das nicht. In this family, fishing goes way back. Paul's granddad was a fisherman too. He took Paul out to sea to show him the ropes when he was just four. Now, as tough as it is, he can't imagine doing any other job. Könntest du ohne mehr leben? Nee, auf keinen Fall. Das ist irgendwie so ein Teil von mir und ohne, ohne geht nicht. Irgendwie muss immer ein bisschen Wasser mit drin sein. Entweder man ist mit ganzem Herz Fischer oder man ist kein richtiger Fischer. Das ist, mein, ist mein, meine Art dazu. Und deswegen und ich bin Fischer, ganz klar. Paul is one of only a few young fishermen in Germany. And Jeroen's job isn't really popular with young people either. Right now, more than half a million people work as ships officers. But 20,000 jobs are open, and that number is expected to increase. <laughs> the shipping industry thinks young people aren't interested in a physically demanding job where they'll be away from home for months at a time. But hanging out with Jeroen, it's clear to me that he enjoys it, even through the tough times. Soon the ship will leave Rotterdam to sail again to the next port. Do you, are you ever afraid? Do you ever think about there being an accident on the ship or something dangerous happening? Uh, I'm not afraid, but you have to keep it really in mind because there's always a possibility that something goes wrong, you know, and, and it's quite dangerous. There are so many things that can happen if you see what we're lifting and with what weights we're working and what amounts of cargo, you know, the dangers of the cargo, the dangers of sailing on a ship, you know, if you're in the middle of the ocean and something happens to the ship, yeah, you know, it's, it's quite dangerous. For example, the mooring line where we're standing right now, if it snaps, yeah, we won't be standing here tomorrow. How long do you think you want to do this for? Maybe when I get children, I want to quit and uh, search for a job ashore, you know, but uh, maybe I will do this for the rest of my life until I uh, retire or uh, go down with the ship, you know, it's, yeah. Back with Adam Gier at the scrapyard. I wonder how does he manage to keep on doing work that puts his health and his life at risk? The answer is that, unlike Jeroen and Paul, he doesn't have a choice. সংসার নিয়ে কিছু করতে পারবো না এখন এই জন্য আমি কাজটা বেশি ভাগলে করতে হয় আর একদিন না করলে দেখা গেছে দেখি আমি একটু টান পড়ে গেছে মাসের শেষে কিন্তু কিছু করার নাই কিছু করার নাই এখন আমার শরীরে শক্তি যতদিন আছে ততদিনই করি as a boy alam gia dreamed of getting a good education and an office job but he doesn't dream anymore now all he knows is shipbreaking 
And as a shipbreaker, Alamgir only works to survive. <laughs>